نحمد و نسلی و نسلم على رسول الكریم اما بعد اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی created men to worship him men and women work together and they are supported by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's revelation through the angels and prophets so it's to make it clear that the target is to achieve the salvation in the life hereafter we as human being are on one side and we have devil shaitan the iblis is on the other side when iblis did not bow down to the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he challenged that men whom oh allah you are making your vicegerent now take the second exit i would well, prove well. is not worthy of being given this status this lofty status should be given to me shaitan says rather men doesn't even deserve any respect for the fact that they're made of clay mud and smelly stinky soil and i as shaitan made of fire which deserves a lot more so i shouldn't be bowing down to adam out of respect rather he should and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said isn't that enough that i commanded you he then challenged oh allah i will prove to you that men doesn't deserve the status and for that he has been given this respite which he asked for so with that background we are at constant war now whether we know it or not whether we understand that or not whether we accept that or not whether we work will we work for this or not we are there in this battle with our arch enemy iblis or shaitan and his offspring his family his team shaitan is working day in day out tirelessly to prove his point and adam and the children of adam on the other hand have been guided by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 224000 prophets who came at a different time in different areas to guide them keep reminding them of the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the goal the ultimate target to achieve and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in quran the shaitan is your enemy in the shaitan lakum adu فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوَ Take him as your enemy. And that is a theme which is quite clearly mentioned. The story is mentioned seven times in Quran about Adam a.s. and his creation and how Shaitan did not listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and actually showed his arrogance. And that was triggered off by his jealousy against Adam and his children. Now with that being the background we need to know, know or understand the meaning of islam aslama yuslimu islaman means to submit some people say that islam means peace that is wrong islam does not mean peace and it is not just me saying it if you have not heard it from any people from before and that's because you have not maybe listen to the scholars who explain it none of the scholars who have done any arabic studies any formal islamic traditional teaching would differ on that so islam means submission submission to the authority of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator our creator and obviously how do we know what allah's demand from us through the books through the prophets final being quran and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now with that we need to know that whoever submits to the command and authority of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the side of adam alayhi salam and those who do not rather question and uh, find faults and criticize are actually on the path of shaitan 
everyone from human race is actually on one side and shaitan and his team is on the other side but sometimes we forget our message our target or we become a tool or a prey to devilish ideas and thoughts so whenever man does that he is actually causing a destruction to himself it's causing problem for himself in the life hereafter it means he is the one to be blamed no one else because if he can't even understand his destination then uh, it is his problem so islam means submission to submit to the authority of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the islam or islam submission comes peace so that's why some of the people just to make it easy would suggest that you know what islam means peace because after you submit to the authority of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accept allah's command and follow it in the right way the way given to us by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the final prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then you are successful you have submitted you have done the job as your job description entailed and you are going to be safe from the tortures and troubles of and the punishments of the hellfire man zuhziha an nar wa udkhil al jannata faqad faz so he is now successful so you are now successful with that so the peace that comes through this submission has the same root salama salamati so salam which is one of the names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well is sin lam mim the same root letter as the islam aslama yuslimu islaman which is islam similar to the salim uh, you know salima to submit and through that comes salama salamati so so we should submit to the command and then we will find the peace in our lives the prophets would come and they did come as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set the plot the challenge continues from shaitan prophets after prophets would come and shaitan would try to misguide people after the prophet have left saying that oh actually he meant that the people would try to change and do tahrif which is you know confusing and changing and chopping according to their whims and desires of the time making certain things halal and haram according to how they feel about it and this is what cause obviously a lot of problem for the people in between and then would be a next prophet coming to clarify it and then next and then next is over the period of that many thousands years 124 prophets there about roughly came down to guide us aright to help us understand the reasons for our existence wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa li'abudu but we have not created men or jinn except to worship us to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else then we achieve that submission which is true submission with sincerity from the depths of our heart not because of any external pressure not for name of fame not for or oh, for this for that reason rather for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that's the sincerity that is sought after that is uh, essential so with that sincere submission to allah's commands his dictates is islam doing all the do's carrying out all the don't do's and stay away and staying away from all the don'ts prohibitions and that is a true muslim muslim is someone who does islam muslim is someone who submits so anyone who is submitting to the command is a muslim that is why you would find allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling ibrahim alayhi salam as muslim and he says that we always give you this name huwa samakum al muslimin min qabl wa fi hada we gave you the name muslim in previous scriptures and also in quran so this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah hajj and that is because 
they all submitted followed the path of Adam alayhi salam unlike shaitan and his family who followed their different way which is total against the command and dictates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so anyone who listens is obedient a submitting person and he is a Muslim or she is a Muslim and anyone who doesn't then is a non-submitter so that's the definition now how do we know what are the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to access that through scholars rightly guided scholars from Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah which is the final edition obviously there were books before as well but as I mentioned people over time they kept changing and chopping to suit their whims, to suit their desires, to suit their bestial self and the need thereof. And that obviously caused them to have lost a lot of teachings and it is very difficult to now decipher which is the true text inspired and revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, left over by the prophets and which is which of the texts is actually a concoction interpolation or interjection from people of the time the scholars of those books the so claimed so called and self claimed scholars of the those texts and that the one of the essential or the most important way of identifying that is the fact that we haven't got those books saved or preserved in their actual form they have been translated in different ways they have been given a lot of Glosses, commentaries, quite detailed explanation, but even the translation, but not the text itself, to the point that there's debate even among the Christian scholars what was the true language of the, you know, Injil, the scripture of Jesus, peace be upon him, the gospel. What was the true language? What was the language it was revealed in? Was it Aramaic? Was it, was it Hebrew? Was it something else? And, and it's not been preserved in that sense. So that is why there's a lot of emphasis on this final book, Quran, to be kept intact with its Arabic, you know, font even, writing style, with all the designation marks, keeping it so preserved that even today all of the Huffaz do not understand the meaning. There are some of them who are scholars as well, but a group of a majority of the people who memorize Quran, they don't know the meaning of it, but they preserve it with words. All the words are preserved, and that is why you can find any book from anywhere, they will still can recite the same Quran for 1443 years, mashallah. And that's amazing. So, anyway, we have to go back to the text through the scholars who could teach us, translate stuff for us, get us to understand that, and then we follow those commands. And this is called submission. So, when we submit, we are the true submitter, we are the true obedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unlike many other who would not submit. It's like in the classroom when you have certain good boys and girls who listen to the rulings and all the you know certain regulations put forward by the head teacher or the school the master or the principal but there are certain naughty ones so those who listen and follow the commands and the rulings and reg regulations are called the Muslim linguistically that these are the ones who follow the dictum. The others, they are not. They are not following the commands. Neither they are following whatever they want to follow. They follow some. They are certain who would follow few. Certain who follow only one or two. And majority they leave. They are certain who would just follow everything except for one thing that they don't like. Dress code, for example, or use a phone in the classroom or something. So whatever that is, the, the divide is clear. 
more you follow the rules, the more you are an obedient servant, which means that you are Muslim. So that is what Islam means. I hope it is clear now, inshallah ta'ala.